continue our deeper life studies. I want to thank you so much for joining me. We are studying the Advanced Bible Course by E.W. Kenyon, and we're taking some time talking about the deeper development of the life of faith and the spiritual life. So I thank you so much for tuning in. This is for the serious student of the Word, and we're talking about what the Word will do in our lives. And again, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I'm Bernard Smalls, founder and teacher at Prevailing Word Pavilion and the Atlanta Center for I Am. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation in the exact knowledge of Jesus Christ. Teach us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are studying what the Word will do in our lives. And this is one of my favorite things to study and to teach because the place of the word in our lives is very important. If you do a careful study of the book of Acts, you constantly see an emphasis on the power of the word. Our ministry is prevailing word pavilion, and that comes from Acts chapter 19, verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. And if you go into Acts chapter 6, you see the word of God increased. And then you go into other places such as Acts chapter 20. The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. And they went everywhere preaching what? The word. So in the book of Acts, the word is preeminent. Now what I think is happening in the church today is so many have gotten away from the word. But see, it's been through subterfuge and subtlety. Well, I'm um, subtlety. We're not trying to use big words here, but it just means um, sub has to do with the enemy going below and hitting with a low blow. It's kind of like a submarine or a torpedo. And I think many people have been talked out of the word. If you look at people's study lives, they don't study like they used to. Preachers don't teach like they used to, for the most part. Now, we, we've gotten, and you know, I do my motivation thing. And uh, by the way, that's strategic. Do you know that we win more people to Jesus through that than just about anything? Because people that enjoy the motivational teachings, they sooner or later want to know more about God. I was just talking to a man yesterday that's part owner of a business uh, near Canada, and um, I was talking to him last week, and he said, I listen to you all the time. I listen to your teachings all the time. And I thought, wow, I met him through corporate training. It was not church. It was not religion. He was in my sales training for all that time. And, and then when he heard the radio, he said, well, I might as well listen to the spiritual stuff. And he has a pretty good commute, so he listens to Bernard Smalls often. So when we talk about things like success motivation, we want to bring a plethora of wisdom, but it's all based on the Bible. However, in this study, this particular study, which is basically our midweek teaching, we get into the Word of God, all right? And if you study the book of Acts carefully, you find an emphasis continuously on the Word of God and I believe it's time for us to get back to emphasizing the word of God. We need the emphasis on the right syllable. <laughs> emphasis on the right syllable. All right. Now, let's talk tonight about the fact that we know the Father through the word. We know the Father through the word. Say after me, we know the Father through the word. Cheers. Now think with me for a moment. How else can you know the Father without the Word? The Word reveals the Father to us. The Word reveals the Holy Spirit to us. The Word reveals the name of Jesus to us. The Word has a place in God's mind, in God's heart, that so few understand. When I was in my prayer time this morning, God kept dealing with me about the fact that he has exalted his word even above his name. And I was praying the name, so I'm, I'm you know, you're praying Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Mekedesh, the Lord our sanctifier, 
uh, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace, Jehovah Shammah, and those names I go through daily in my affirmation prayer time. That's a good pattern to pray by because we're hallowing the name. And the Lord starts speaking to me, now wait a minute here. I've exalted my word even above what you're doing right here now. So take some time and emphasize and affirm and confess and declare the word. So I shifted into that in prayer and it turbocharged <laughs> my prayer time because it's the word that grows. It's the word that increases. It's the word that prevails. And he has exalted his word even above his name. Now you're going to have to meditate on that one. You're going to have to chew on that. So the word has a preeminent place in the life of God. And some people think we put an inordinate uh, uh, emphasis on the word, but I don't think you can put too much emphasis on the word of God. So we know the father through the word, John 16, 27. Thank you so much for joining me. Scripture says, for the father himself loveth you, reading the King James Bible, because you have loved me and believed that I come forth or came forth from the Father. Notice the Father himself loves you. So say after me, the Father loves me. Say it again, the Father loves me. Well, how do you know that? Through the word. Why, we just shared it. John 16, look at verses 27 and 28. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and believed that I came forth from the Father. Now, John 17, 23. John 17, 23. Are you enjoying this? The word is good. It says that the world may know that thou didst send me and lovedest or loved them as even as thou hast loved me, even as you loved me. So, uh, what he's saying here, and I'm using the King James intentionally. I, I use new translations. I, I believe in using modern translations. But a lot of times the King James is so foundational with saying what we need to hear the way we need to hear it. And by the way, it's closest to the original, um, the original intention of all the translations that are written. There's a long story behind that. But um, the world may know that you have sent me and that you love them as you love me. Now, threefold. God loves Jesus. God loves the believer. And God loves the world. How do we know God loved the world? Well, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, how do you know that? Through the word. Now, John 14, 23, let's just magnify the word of God. John 14, 23, hallelujah. If a man love me, he will keep my word. He will keep my word. He will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, what he's saying now is the Father and Jesus will come and live with us if we love him. These three scriptures prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Father loves his children as he loved Jesus and that it is a joy for him to make his home with us. Now, if the Father makes his home with you, you can guarantee you you're going to have food. You can guarantee, uh, you can be guaranteed that your rent's going to be paid or your house payment. You can be guaranteed that the taxes will be paid because the father always pays his way. If you look at Jesus, uh, every time Jesus uh, received something of someone, he blessed them, such as Peter's boat, when Peter allowed him to use the boat. So when you love Jesus, when you love the word, when you love the Father, you love Jesus, you love the Word, they will come and make their abode or their dwelling place with you. But we know this all through the Word. Say, I know the Father by the Word. Say, I know the Father through the Word. Say, I know the Father in the Word.
Well, let's continue our deeper life studies. I want to thank you so much for joining me. We are studying the Advanced Bible Course by E.W. Kenyon, and we're taking some time talking about the deeper development of the life of faith and the spiritual life. So I thank you so much for tuning in. This is for the serious student of the Word, and we're talking about what the Word will do in our lives. And again, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I'm Bernard Smalls, founder and teacher at Prevailing Word Pavilion and the Atlanta Center for I Am. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation in the exact knowledge of Jesus Christ. Teach us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are studying what the Word will do in our lives. And this is one of my favorite things to study and to teach because the place of the Word in our lives is very important. If you do a careful study of the book of Acts, you constantly see an emphasis on the power of the Word. Our ministry is Prevailing Word Pavilion, and that comes from Acts chapter 19, verse 20. So mightily grew the Word of God and prevailed. And if you go into Acts chapter 6, you see the word of God increased. And then you go into other places such as Acts chapter 20. The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. And they went everywhere preaching what? The word. So in the book of Acts, the word is preeminent. Now what I think is happening in the church today is so many have gotten away from the word. But see, it's been through subterfuge and subtlety. Well, um, subtlety, we're not trying to use big words here, but it just means um, sub has to do with the enemy going below and hitting with a low blow. It's kind of like a submarine or a torpedo. And I think many people have been talked out of the word. If you look at people's study lives, they don't study like they used to. Preachers don't teach like they used to, for the most part. Now, we, we've gotten, and you know, I do my motivation thing. And uh, by the way, that's strategic. Do you know that we win more people to Jesus through that than just about anything? Because people that enjoy the motivational teachings, they sooner or later want to know more about God. I was just talking to a man yesterday that's part owner of a business uh, near Canada, and um, I was talking to him last week, and he said, I listen to you all the time. I listen to your teachings all the time. And I thought, wow, I met him through corporate training. It was not church. It was not religion. He was in my sales training for all that time. And, and then when he heard the radio, he said, well, I might as well listen to the spiritual stuff. And he has a pretty good commute, so he listens to Bernard Smalls often. So when we talk about things like success motivation, we want to bring a plethora of wisdom, but it's all based on the Bible. However, in this study, this particular study, which is basically our midweek teaching, we get into the Word of God, all right? And if you study the book of Acts carefully, you find an emphasis continuously on the Word of God and I believe it's time for us to get back to emphasizing the Word of God. We need the emphasis on the right syllable. <laughs> emphasis on the right syllable. All right. Now, let's talk tonight about the fact that we know the Father through the Word. We know the Father through the Word. Say after me, we know the Father through the Word. Cheers. Now think with me for a moment. How else can you know the Father without the Word? The Word reveals the Father to us. The Word reveals the Holy Spirit to us. The Word reveals the name of Jesus to us. The Word has a place in God's mind, in God's heart, that so few understand. When I was in my prayer time this morning, God kept dealing with me about the fact that he has exalted his word even above his name. And I was praying the name, so I'm, I'm you know, you're praying Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Mekedesh, the Lord our sanctifier, 
uh, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace, Jehovah Shama, and those names I go through daily in my affirmation prayer time. That's a good pattern to pray by because we're hallowing the name. And the Lord starts speaking to me. Now, wait a minute here. I've exalted my word even above what you're doing right here now. So take some time and emphasize and affirm and confess and declare the word. So I shifted into that in prayer and it turbocharged <laughs> my prayer time because it's the word that grows. It's the word that increases. It's the word that prevails. And he has exalted his word even above his name. Now you're going to have to meditate on that one. You're going to have to chew on that. So the word has a preeminent place in the life of God. And some people think we put an inordinate uh, uh, emphasis on the word, but I don't think you can put too much emphasis on the word of God. So we know the father through the word, John 16, 27. Thank you so much for joining me. Scripture says, for the father himself loveth you, reading the King James Bible, because you have loved me and believed that I come forth or came forth from the Father. Notice the Father himself loves you. So say after me, the Father loves me. Say it again, the Father loves me. Well, how do you know that? Through the word. Why, we just shared it. John 16, look at verses 27 and 28. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and believed that I came forth from the Father. Now, John 17, 23. John 17, 23. Are you enjoying this? The word is good. It says that the world may know that thou didst sent me and lovest or loved them as even as thou hast loved me, even as you loved me. So, uh, what he's saying here, and I'm using the King James intentionally. I, I use new translations. I, I believe in using modern translations. But a lot of times the King James is so foundational with saying what we need to hear the way we need to hear it. And by the way, it's closest to the original, um, the original intention of all the translations that are written. There's a long story behind that. But um, the world may know that you have sent me and that you love them as you love me. Now, threefold. God loves Jesus. God loves the believer. And God loves the world. How do we know God loved the world? Well, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, how do you know that? Through the word. Now, John 14, 23, let's just magnify the word of God. John 14, 23, hallelujah. If a man love me, he will keep my word. He will keep my word. He will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, what he's saying now is the Father and Jesus will come and live with us if we love him. These three scriptures prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Father loves his children as he loved Jesus and that it is a joy for him to make his home with us. Now, if the Father makes his home with you, you can guarantee you you're going to have food. You can guarantee, uh, you can be guaranteed that your rent's going to be paid or your house payment. You can be guaranteed that the taxes will be paid because the Father always pays his way. If you look at Jesus, uh, every time Jesus uh, received something of someone, he blessed them, such as Peter's boat, when Peter allowed him to use the boat. So when you love Jesus, when you love the word, when you love the Father, you love Jesus, you love the Word, they will come and make their abode or their dwelling place with you. But we know this all through the Word. Say, I know the Father by the Word. Say, I know the Father through the Word. Say, I know the Father in the Word.
We are studying Advanced Bible Course, and we are talking about knowing the Father through the Word. How intimate the Father wants to be with us. The Father wants an intimate relationship with His children. Do you have an intimate relationship with God? When you go into prayer, do you get into intimacy or are you just mouthing words? I believe in the power of positive affirmations, power of positive meditations and so on. And I have certain written down that I use regularly in prayer. And if you're interested, reach out to me and I'll send you a copy. This, I have no corner on this stuff. This is the word of God. We're here to share it. But even that part of it, even though it's good, there's an intimacy with the Father that is so important that we don't want to leave out. The Father cares. The Father loves us. In fact, the Father is love. And the Father wants an intimacy with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Do you have an intimate relationship with the Father? Well, I know Jesus, but this Father, I don't know who he is. Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And Jesus also said, the Father is greater than all. Thank God for God the Father. Glory to God. He is the Father of all, the Father's love, the Father's care. The Father wants to be intimate with us. And we know this, we're talking about the fact that we know it through the word. Now, Matthew chapter six, verses 31 through 33. Thank you again for joining me. Matthew 6, 31 says, "Take, therefore take no thought saying, by the way, notice how do you take a thought? By saying it. Take no thought saying. When you don't say it, you don't take the thought. When you say it, you take the thought. When a negative thing happens in your life and you start talking about it, saying it, you have then taken the thought. Well, take the positive. Take the word. Take faith. Take what we're sharing tonight. Because it says, um, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Now, those are Thoughts and words of lack. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall be, we be clothed? Or what shall we wear? Now notice. For after all these things do, do the Gentiles seek, or you could say the nations that don't know God, they're the ones in lack, not the people that know God. And I'm on a campaign to eradicate poverty consciousness from the minds of God's people. Because poverty consciousness is not of God. Every time I look at a Christian struggling, and trust me, I have struggled. <laughs> I have borne the burden <laughs> of struggling and, and hustling and just, just scraping through to pay bills. Every time I see that, a compassion rises in me that it's not supposed to be that way. And you don't have to live in lack. But, you know, the world system is so negative and they talk about so much shortage and lack and debt and all this stuff that if you're listening to the news, you will develop a poverty consciousness or at least a shortage consciousness. You may not be one that's just begging, but you're still fearing there's not enough to be a giver and to tithe and to do all the things God wants you to and still enjoy abundant life. See, the Father is abundant. And the Father wants you to enjoy abundant life. Once many people don't see that side of God. Like I was talking to someone recently and they said, I have never bought a new car. I said, why is that? Oh, that's, that, that would be wasteful to buy a new car when I could buy a used one. So do you think the Lord's thinking that way? Now, I'm not talking about cars, just cars. But that's just one of the <laughs> illustrations. Now, I remember the first time I bought a new car after I had some success in the business world. And I bought a brand new European car. Man, I got some persecution even from the church I was going to. <laughs> one guy said, well, you bought that new European car, so you must not be hurting for money. <laughs> when I saw you with that car, <laughs> I thought, man, they're looking at the car you drive. So what are you going to do here? You're going to glorify God who supplies all of your needs. And folks, God's not broke, but it's going to take some renewing the mind. Stay with me and we'll advance you in prosperity. And you'll get to see that the people preaching against prosperity 
are actually preaching against the word of God. But let's stay on course here. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. What? Food, clothing, shelter, what we're going to drink, what we're going to eat, wherewithal shall we be clothed, clothed. They take the thought and speak negativity. They speak lack. They speak shortage. Now listen to this. Don't take the thought, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Notice it's the Father who supplies all of our needs. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things might be added unto you. And all these things shall be taken away from you. No, Scripture says all these things shall be added unto you. Now, Jesus said and gave credit for provision to the Father. So say, the Father cares and the Father provides. Once again, say, my Father cares and my Father provides. Now say, my God supplies all of my need whew, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How do you know that? Through the word. It's all through the word. So we know the Father through the Word. Our next point is faith comes through the Word. Faith comes through the Word. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Thank you again for joining me. The Word of faith which we preach. Now, I'm not going to spend time defending the Word of faith. There's one thing I learned from Dad Hagen. Just keep teaching. Don't even answer your critics. However, I do want to address the fact that the word of faith is the word of God. So when you start coming against that word of faith, you're coming against that word of God. Now, I know you may be talking about a sect or a segment or a group of teachers that teach a certain way, but you got to be real wise and careful because you don't want to insult the word of God and insult the spirit of grace. Amen? Because I believe that God is jealous with godly jealousy over his word. And just because some guys may have um, gone imbalanced with it, it doesn't mean, and by the way, in the first place, who are, who are we to be judging God's servants? People are always talking about other preachers. I said, <laughs> I got enough time on my hand and uh, I'm not claiming trouble, but I got enough issues I'm dealing with with Bernie. <laughs> I don't have time to talk about T.D. Jakes or somebody else and how they're doing their, their spiritual life or Joel Osteen or whoever. But you do pray for the brethren. Keep, keep the ministers in prayer. But back to the point here, don't malign and come against the word of faith because it's the word of God. That's all I'll say. Romans 10, 8, Paul calls it the word of faith. Notice Paul, by the Holy Spirit, called it the word of faith. So you want to be careful what you say about that word of faith. Okay. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I used to always wonder, how can you look to Jesus? I mean, really, if you think, okay, practically, how can you look to Jesus? Do we get a rocket ship? and fly to heaven? Do we go talk to Elon Musk and see if he could develop through his space program some kind of a ship to deliver us there? Then we can get there and say, oh, I'm now looking to Jesus. <laughs> okay. No, we look to Jesus through the word. Looking into the word and acting on the word brings Jesus on the scene. When you look to Jesus, that is faith. And what is faith? Faith is acting on the word. It's letting the word loose in us, letting the word dominate us. We found the secret of looking to Jesus is looking to the word. And let me tell you something about this. Everybody's talking about going to the next level. The next level is the word and going up in the word and acting on the word and living by the word and letting the word become your intimate source of faith. So then faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I trust that you have been blessed by the hearing of the word of God. We are supported by the love gifts of you, the listener. Thank you so much for your prayers and your financial support. We believe in the kingdom of God, and we believe that God's system of high finance is tithes and offerings. So I encourage you, be obedient in the area of tithing. Tithing means to pay the tenth. Now, I know that sounds old-fashioned, but it's still in the word of God because it's God's financial system. And guess what? God's program works. Heaven has no national debt. <laughs> All right. So a lot of people say that tithing stuff, I don't know about it. Well, it takes faith as we were teaching tonight. Go to our website, prevailingwordnow.com. Pay your tithe and sow an offering and watch what God does in your life. And may God expand your life, prosper you until your destiny is fulfilled. Again, that website is Prevailing wordnow.com prevailingwordnow.com I see you next week I want to tell you about something new and exciting that's happening on March 30th Saturday March 30th we will have our special Easter service so if you're in the Atlanta area I invite you to come out and join us and by the way this will be the launch or the planting of prevailing word pavilion our services are short simple to the point you'll come in we'll make you feel at home you'll be blessed and then you can go out and enjoy the rest of your evening and that saturday evening we will be meeting at 6 p.m march 30th for more information simply go to my website which is prevailingwordnow.com and click on the meeting tab and i'll see you there let's rise up to positive living